Hello. Today I'm going to tie for you a soft hackle wet fly. And soft hackle flies have been around forever. Uh, they've been made from, of various materials. There are some that imitate the hare's ear. Today we'll tie a pheasant tail version, but um, I want to concentrate on the hackle. So we'll talk more about that in a little bit. We're going to tie, tie it on a size 14, a Daiichi 1560. Um, here's an example of soft hackles. This was a hen patch that we picked up at Gander Mountain in Erie. Um, most of the feathers on this patch are a little large for a size 14. This bunch of feathers from a pheasant skin are way too large, but there's a way to deal with those. So here's an example of the olive pheasant tail that we're going to use for this fly. And we're going to rib it with fine copper wire. Use a little dubbing up just behind for a thorax and tie it with a dot black thread. So we'll get a hook in the vise and get started. Now that uh, this hook is a 1x long, I kind of like to do that on some of these soft tackles. Um, I like to swing a couple of flies at a time, maybe a woolly bugger and a soft tackle and and um, and kind of let them play out after the swing. And a lot of times these, these longer flies start to float toward the top and, and kind of work like an emerger. I think there's a name for that. It was a Lysen ring lift or something like that where at the end of the swing he would kind of lift the fly up and... Um, it would look like it was emerging and kind of fool the trout. So the back half of this fly is essentially a pheasant tail, just like the pheasant tail nymph. So we tied in about five or six fibers, um, maybe a little longer than on the actual nymph. And then this piece of copper wire. So drag it back till the end of the copper wire is even with my stopping point and wrap back. Now let me put two wraps over that pheasant tail, just enough to kind of hold it in place. And we'll bring our thread forward, smooth out any low spots. And you could build some taper, maybe a little more taper. You build it up too much though, I think it uh, it doesn't it sink as well. So if you want to fish these down under the water, if you want to get down where the fish are quicker, I think um, thin bodies work better. So we're going to use the rotary feature of the vise. And when I wrap um, pheasant tail on some of the soft fibers, I like to do two things. So I like to wrap them over a little bit of super glue. And I wrap them toward me. So here we'll get the fibers separated from the copper wire, put that in the material clip. So we're going to rotate the vise away from me. Keep in mind, crazy left-handed tire and everything probably looks a little backwards for you. Hopefully you're picking this up as we go, but um, it's the only way I know to do it is left-handed and backwards. <laughs> so we'll get the uh, bobbin cradle out of the way. We'll do a cross wrap and a uh, an additional wrap in front. Do that once or twice, three times to kind of hold things in place. And snip off the excess. So now, if you want to use, the, it's a good idea to throw in a couple of whips to kind of lock things in place, especially if you want to use the rotary feature to wrap the copper wire. I don't always. But it's easier to see. Um, you know where you are. So the copper wire was tied in on the far side so it comes underneath first and stays away from the tail fibers. And we're going to try for four or five wraps here. And kind of pull it to a place that makes it convenient to tie off. So again one behind, one in front, and a couple more over top of the wire. And we can helicopter that. I blocked your view of that with my thumb so you can't really see but we <laughs> helicoptered the wire off. Okay, so I like to do a little ball of some kind of soft dubbing here up front. You could use um, peacock curl. Um, 
I think, to make a good abdomen. But the creamy rabbit fur seems to add something to this fly. I think if you're fishing for rainbow trout, sometimes a little bit of that pink uh, uh, pink dubbing with some, some shiny antron or something in it. or I think that makes a good thorax on these flies. But then when you do a little ball of that, you never know if they're taking the fly as a fly, if they're taking it as an egg pattern. Um, you know, sometimes it looks like a small pink egg with a, with a little bug hanging on. And, uh, you know, lots of times and some patterns call for a bead right here instead of that, uh, that tan rabbit fur. Um, and little beads of various colors. I found these little pink beads at the craft store. They were, um, they were called pink chalk, I think, and they were about the right size. And I'm not ashamed to fish those as an abdomen, especially where I know they stock rainbow trout. They're fooled by pink. It looks somewhat like an egg and again looks like a fly maybe holding on to that egg for dear life. Alright, so we have the hackle tied in. I kind of crossed over back and forth, pulled the uh, stem down and and uh, locked everything in. And I think the effort here was to kind of wrap against the thread and let the thread keep the wraps together. Not sure how necessary any of that was. We're going to try for about three wraps. And that may be a little extra leggy. Some folks like, you know, their, their wet flies to be, or soft tackles to be tied a little more sparse. Um, I don't know. I like a few legs on there. So I went with almost three turns. So we'll cross over and get a couple of wraps in place to tie off that uh, soft tackle. And even this soft tackle is picked off uh, towards the, um, you know, the smaller part of that, that hen patch. But it's a little bit on the large side. side. And that's what I want to concentrate on here as we go through this. So we're going to tie this first one. But at the end, I added in some more video of a couple of techniques that I've used, uh, some more successfully than others, to use larger hackles. And that's just it with these flies. These, these, if you get a hackle that's small enough for a soft hackle, it tends to have a thin stem and it gets kind of um, fragile. And then some of the real big ones are nice and colorful, like those pheasant skin feathers I showed you. Those, those make great soft hackles with the little black tips. Those are way too big. So there are techniques, though, to deal with the bigger ones. So I could primp and brush this out a little better, but all in all, um, that's the fly right there. Soft tackle and wet flies, I, th I think, benefit to me, to my eye. Uh, they look better with a nice, big, glossy head. So that's what we're after here. We'll lay in some Sally Hansen's hard as nails. If you guys are using UV, um, that's a good place to add it in. And so now, jumping straight into the next technique... And I'm not going to do a complete fly on these next couple things I was going to show you. It's more about showing um, options for tying in. I've seen other folks do tips where they, they teach you how to use a long uh, bundle of fiber, hackle fibers. So a couple of, I guess, um, things that I wanted to address. I don't like it when you tie the longer fibers in at the right length, but leave the butts facing forward. They end up in the eye of the hook and hard to cover and hard to trim off. This is just an example of one of those bigger feathers. But it's got the, um, but what I do there is I tip, I, I cut the tip section out, make a little V, and then tie it in by the stem, uh, essentially in the right place, and pull it back until I get the fibers. Now keep in mind, those fibers have to be wrapped to the hook. And then you're going to bend them back and you're going to wrap over them a little bit. So in this case, even in this example where I'm just trying to demonstrate the technique, I could have left these fibers a little longer. Um, they almost come out a little short for me. And if I were tying the fly right there, I would have trimmed off the, the butt section, the rest of that uh, feather. And then when I pull these back and wrap over them a little bit, 
that would be my hackle. So not bad. The whole thing could have been positioned a little, a little closer to the eye of the hook. A little smaller head on that one. And then the other technique, and this one, I like this a little better. I have more success with using larger feathers this way. So I'll tie them in back a little further than I would otherwise. And I have to pause here until the video kind of catches up. We'll get some hackle pliers on this and, and wrap it. But we're wrapping back a little further. And I usually, again, you tie this in first. And we'll get about two or three wraps here. And kind of print it back out of the way. And get a couple of cross wraps there and one in front to tie it off and trim off the excess. And at this point, we're using the same technique as we did just before, except I wrapped this hackle. And if the hackle were longer or I wanted the, the fibers to end up shorter, I would have wrapped it, tied it in and wrapped it back just a little further on the hook shank. And all that is all, you know, almost always covered up. Uh, in this case, it would have been covered up by a ball of fur. So there we have it. The fibers are tied in just behind the eye. There's a space there to pull them back and wrap over them. And once that happens, they'll be exactly the right length. So I didn't drag you through tying each of these second two flies. Um, but there they are. They're on the cork. Um, they look essentially the same. Hackle fibers are almost the same length. And they they produce a nice uh, a nice hackle with with something that would have otherwise been too big. So I hope the tips help you out. I hope you catch some fish with these flies. And if you hung in there all the way to the end, thanks for watching. And if you want to learn more about me, look me up on Amazon. Until next time, be safe.